Welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, my lesson is on the Pythagorean Theorem. Our objectives today are that you will understand and be able to explain a proof of the Pythagorean Theorem, and that you will use the Pythagorean Theorem to find missing side lengths of a right triangle. Here's what I'd like you thinking about today. How can you apply what you have learned about square roots to the Pythagorean Theorem? First, let's talk about Pythagoras. Pythagoras was a Greek mathematician. He is credited for the Pythagorean Theorem. It is believed that the discovery was originally made thousands of years earlier than he is credited for it by the Babylonians. So, Babylonians used this for architecture to create right angles so that walls were perpendicular to the ground. Pythagoras was the first mathematician to prove why the Pythagorean theorem works. Before we can understand the Pythagorean theorem, we need to know some key vocabulary words about right triangles. So by definition, a right triangle has one 90 degree angle. In our triangle, it is right here. It is labeled with this square, noting that it is a right angle forming a 90 degree angle. So remember, right angles are perpendicular. They form a right angle 90 degrees. So our first key thing that we need to understand about a right triangle is that it has two legs. We call these sides A and B legs because the two legs are the sides of the triangle that form the right angle. So we call the two sides that form this right angle legs. And that's very important in understanding and using the Pythagorean theorem. Our other side, which here is labeled C, is what we call the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the side of the right triangle that is opposite the right angle. So here we can see opposite the right angle is our hypotenuse and our right angle is formed by our legs. Special thing to note, your hypotenuse is always your longest side. So the side opposite the right angle is your hypotenuse and always the longest side of your right triangle. Now we're ready to learn about the Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean this theorem states that in any right triangle, very important, the Pythagorean theorem is only applicable to a right triangle. The sum of the squares of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Sounds like a lot. Here's the formula. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. You've probably heard this a lot. So let's look at our definition again. The sum means to add the squares of the legs. So here are my legs, A and B, forming the right angle. A squared plus B squared, the sum of the squares of the legs, is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Here's my hypotenuse labeled C squared. So what this means is if you plug in the values for the legs A and square it and add it to the value B, the other leg squared, it will equal the hypotenuse C squared. It's a very special relationship. Here's a proof of why it works. So typically in the classroom I give my students graph paper and they do this. You can try this at home as well. So I'm going to tell you that I have measured this out with my graphics and this is a side length of 3, 4, and 5. So if you want to try it at home with graph paper and do 3 by 3 and 4 by 4 and 5 by 5, you can cut it out physically at home and see that it works. So let's try it here on the computer. So I'm going to square A. We have learned in previous lessons that squaring A is where we get a perfect square from. So this is a 3 by 3 square. The side is measures 3 and my perfect square is 3 by 3 with an area of 9. So when I square 3 I get 9 which is the area of my square. B 
or 4 squared would become 16, so 4 by 4. So this image represents squaring that number. And here's my hypotenuse squared, which is 5 squared. So now what I'm going to do is show you how when I add A and B together, it will make C. So I've squared it. This is A squared, B squared, C squared, and now I'm going to show you how when I add A and B together, it is perfectly equal to C. So I'm going to take that B squared and put it on top, and now I have this space to cover. And A squared will fit perfectly there. So first, let's take A. We need to cut it up. So I've cut it up into these four pieces, and now I'm going to move one piece over, move the second piece over, Here's my third piece and my last piece. So I had to cut A, but A and B perfectly cover up C squared. And that's the proof why it works. And you can try this at home using graph paper for any right triangle and it will work. Now let's use the Pythagorean theorem to find a missing side of a right triangle. Remember, it must be a right triangle. That's the only kind of triangle the Pythagorean theorem works on. We're also being told that if necessary, round to the nearest tenth. So my students will be very happy to know that they can use their calculators because I haven't been letting them use calculators, but they're going to get to do that. So we're going to start with our Pythagorean theorem. And I'm going to take my value of A and B. C is my hypotenuse directly across from this right angle. So A and square it, 4 squared, the other leg, 6, and square it. So now to solve this, the first thing I need to do is clear my exponents. So 4 squared is 16, and 6 squared is 36. And I'm solving for C squared. I want to know C, but first I need to solve for C squared. 16 plus 36 is 52. Now that I have c squared equals 52, I'm going to find the square root of both sides. Remember, finding the square root is the inverse operation to squaring. And then using a calculator rounding to the nearest tenth, the square root of 52 is 7.2. So my hypotenuse, or this side c, is 7.2 when the legs are 4 and 6. Okay, now it's your turn. I would like you to find the missing side, which is our C, our hypotenuse, and if necessary, round to the nearest tenth. Go ahead and pause the video now and come back when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem because we have a right triangle. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. My two legs are 9 and 12. I know those are my A and B, my legs, because they form the right angle. So 9 squared plus 12 squared will equal c squared. 9 squared is 81, and 12 squared is 144. Now let's add 81 and 144. I get 225 equals c squared. Let's take the square root of both sides, and the square root of 225 is 15. So my missing side length is 15. Now let's find a missing leg. We don't always solve for the hypotenuse. Sometimes we're missing a different side. So, and again, if necessary, we will round to the nearest tenth. So I know that this is a leg because A and 11 form the right angle. Across is 15. This is my hypotenuse. So here's the Pythagorean theorem. We don't know A. B is 11 and C is 15. So let's square 11, which is 121, and 15 squared is 225. So now to solve for a squared, I need to subtract 121 from each side. 225 subtract 121 is 104. Remember, this is a zero pair, leaving me a squared equals 104. So now we're going to take the square root of each side, Using our calculator, we are going to find that the square root of 104 to the nearest tenth is 10.2. So my missing side length, which is a leg, has a length of 10.2.
Now it's your turn. I would like you to find the value of the missing side. Please pause the video now and come back and hit play when you're done. Welcome back. So let's start with our Pythagorean theorem. Now I'm missing this leg B. I know it's a leg because it helps form this right angle. So A is going to have a value of 7. 7 squared plus my unknown side B squared is equal to my hypotenuse across from the right angle squared. 7 squared is 49 plus B squared and 25 squared is 625. Now I need to get B squared alone, so I'm going to subtract 49 from each side, zero pair, giving me B squared and 625 subtract 49 is 576. Now to solve for the value of B, we're going to take the square root of each side. So B is equal to 24. So my missing side, a leg, is 24, noting that the hypotenuse is the largest side. There you have it. That is how you prove the Pythagorean theorem, how you use the Pythagorean theorem, and how to find a missing side of a right triangle. Thanks for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. Have a great day.